So I'm at the end of the garden this afternoon. The sun's out, the snowdrops are out, the birds are singing, and um, I thought I'd take this rare opportunity at the moment to get a bit of sun on my face and answer some of the questions that you guys have sent in. <coughs> so, let's go. Right. Okay, a few people asked me uh, this. How do you source your wood and what species do you like or recommend? Um, so if you, if you watched episode two, you would have seen um, I went up to uh, Arnus Vale Cemetery in Bristol to collect some wood, which I've been getting my wood from there for about the last year and a half or so. Uh, a friend of mine works there and um, there's loads of sort of tree management and stuff going on there. So if I'm in need of a bit of wood, usually I'll give him a shout and uh, he'll tell me if there's anything I can go and pick up. Um, I like to try and get all of my wood from conservation projects if possible and anywhere I can get it for free is always a bonus. Um, I don't like to cut down trees just for the sake of carving, carving the wood. Uh, in terms of the species that I like to carve, I tend to go for wood that is kind of medium hardness so Anything really, really tough like uh, beech, hawthorn, blackthorn, I tend to avoid unless the wood is really, really nice looking. And then on the other end of the scale, things like willow and uh, poplar and things I'm not so keen on, they're a bit too soft. So somewhere in the middle, things like sycamore, um, cherry, and um, although elm's quite tough, I quite like to carve that because it's such a nice wood. Um, I think cherry is my favourite. It's got that kind of um, combination of amazing grain, nice carvability, and um, yeah, I think I think that's probably my favourite. Right. What made you get into spoon carving? Yeah, a couple of people asked me this. Um, I first started spoon carving about six or seven years ago. Uh, I just moved to Bristol. I was volunteering for the Wildlife Trust, which is a, a conservation charity that we have in, in the UK. And um, I was leading groups of volunteers on practical tasks on the nature reserves. We were doing things like um, tree felling and coppicing and hedge laying and things like that. And we were using these little hatchets, small axes, that uh, I now know are uh, wildlife hatchets made by Gransfors Brooks and um, basically I just really wanted one and I first started making spoons just as an excuse to buy an axe and uh, yes yeah, for some one reason or another it just sort of stuck and I, I became a bit obsessed and um, I've been doing it most days <laughs> most days since then how do you prevent splits while carving in green wood yeah, so splits that occur while you're carving tend to be ones that you've put in yourself from uh, heavy hits from the axe or sometimes if you've stopped, stopped carving halfway and you've let it dry too quickly or something and cracks can appear. So um, the most common uh, split you can put in it when you're axing is when you're axing down the handle towards the bowl and you go a bit heavy. Um, and you and you and you just do a bit of a heavy blow on the shoulder, and that can put a crack that runs into the bowl. I've, there's an example of that on the first episode of of the vlog, so um, go back and check that out if you haven't seen that. Yeah, and um, drying the wood too quickly will make it crack. So if if you're if you've made anything like a bowl, especially anything with thick walls, make sure you dry it really really slowly. Otherwise, um, it can crack. With spoons, you don't have to worry so much because they're so thin, they dry quite quickly. Just don't put them on a radiator or in the sun or anything like that. But you can just put them inside and they should dry just fine. Um, yeah, so that would be my tips for avoiding splits and cracks. All right, okay. What happens after we die? Good question. Um, 
to quote the uh, great philosopher Keanu Reeves, I know that the ones who love us will miss us. Have you ever carved forks? That's fighting talk, that is. That's the best way to start a punch up at a spoon carving gathering, I think, that question. Um, I've carved maybe one one fork and a couple of sporks in my time. I'll I'll put a picture to the to the one fork I've carved, which wasn't actually really a, even a fork. But um the thing about forks is there's not all that much variety. You've only really got one type of fork, which is your basic eating fork. And um, compared to spoons where you've got so many different uh, avenues to go down in terms of design and, and function and things. So, um, no, forks don't interest me all that much. What did your first spoon look like? Uh, I'll put a picture up. Um, the first spoon I ever carved was carved with a kitchen knife, a scalpel and lots of sandpaper while I was waiting for my tools to arrive on the post. Yeah, it wasn't great and I learned a lot about grain direction and how to split a spoon in half. Any tips for a beginner getting a symmetrical and smooth back of bowl? Yes, yeah, so symmetry is can be tricky. Um, there's a couple of tips uh, I'd say. Firstly, if you're drawing the outline of the spoon on the wood, just take a bit more time to make sure that that's symmetrical. Because if you're following the line and the line's not not uh, even, then you're you're going to end up with an uneven spoon. So spend a bit more time drawing the the outline, and if you follow the line, then that should work. Um, just keep looking at the spoon, look at it from the front, from the back, because sometimes the different perspective will, will um, expose different uh, uneven areas. Um, hold the spoon up to the light, sometimes the grain of the wood can throw your eye off and make something look uh, uneven that's not uneven, or make it look even when it's not. And um, just, just practice really. It's funny how something, that, something like that um, will just come come in time and then um, another thing that I'll say is don't worry too much about sort of chasing symmetry um, and if you're really finding it frustrating then just forget about it for a while carve some asymmetric spoons because there's plenty of designs um, that you can come up with that, that aren't symmetric that work just just fine um, this spoon here that I carved last year there's nothing symmetric about it the, the bowl's asymmetric, the handle's wonky, and this is the spoon that I use the most at the moment, so symmetry is not uh, essential for, for good um, practicality or function of a spoon. Um, and then even like a spoon like this that I tried to get symmetrical is not, and you just don't notice it. This one I did quite well and got it quite symmetric, but you know they, they work just the same so in terms of function don't worry about symmetry too much because you're not going to notice when you use it um, but have a go at just carving some asymmetric stuff for a while and you'll build your skills up and when you come back to, to go for symmetry again you'll find that it's um, a lot easier than it was before lost my, lost, losing my questions uh, what was the Oh, and a smooth back of a bowl. Uh, so the best tip for getting smooth finish is to have a really sharp knife. So make sure you, you keep your tool sharp. And um, a lot of the time people starting out are trying to take too much off with each cut. So you end up, instead of with a smooth cut, you're kind of digging um, holes almost. And you, you get a bit of grain tear out you get sort of lumps and bumps here here and there and everywhere um, so just like pull back a bit try and take less off with each cut and concentrate on getting a clean cut rather than taking off loads of wood uh, you know so so many skills you know they're not going to come naturally 
and immediately. So just put the time and keep practicing and, and you will notice an improvement over time. Uh, similar, similar answer to this next question. How do you get an even edge or rim around the bowl? Uh, yeah, again, sharp knife. Um, just take your time. Creep up on the line. So I find, I don't know if this is the outside or the inside edge, or maybe just the edge itself. Um, so you might find it easy uh, if, you, if you've drawn the outer outline and then if you draw an inner line as well around the bowl um, to give you something to work to and just creep up on the line don't try and rush it um, take your time take off small amounts of wood each time and 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 just keep um, stopping what you're doing looking at the spoon you know if you eye it up you can see where you need to take more off less off and um, yeah just practice 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 <laughs> Okay, last question. I just carved an elm cookser, which is ring porous. Any ideas to stop it from sweating out liquids? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so ring porous woods are ones that are kind of open grained. Um, things like elm, ash, oak. When you when you look at the grain, you can see actually you can see the pores in between the rings. And um, so if you carve something like a cup, when you put liquid in it, the liquid is just going to run out of these, of these holes. Or not run out, but sweat out, as, uh, as said in the question. Um, it will still happen, actually, in, in more tight-grained woods, but just not to the same extent. So there's a couple of things you can do to get around that problem. Um, you want to seal the wood, basically. So depending on what you're using the cup for. So if you're using it for like cold liquids, um, just water or maybe alcohol or something, then you can seal it with uh, wax, maybe beeswax, or you can make a mixture of uh, oil and wax that you can just sort of spread onto the wood and it will um, seal all the holes. Um, if you're going to be using hot liquids, like tea or coffee, then that's just going to melt the wax and you're just going to end up drinking melted wax so that's not going to work so what you what you want to do um, if you're going to be using hot liquids is uh, oil the wood with something like a linseed oil or a walnut oil or something that will cure and make sure you cure the oil properly the oil will cure over time but you can speed it up in a, in a couple of different ways you can um, cure it in a kiln which involves uh, about 24 hours in an, even in an oven or a kiln at about, about 100 degrees centigrade. If you don't have access to a kiln, you can get pre-oxidized uh, oil, which dries a lot quicker. Um, avoid anything like boiled linseed oil because they have added drying agents, which are sort of nasty chemicals that you don't want to be um, ingesting and um, if you cure the oil and the wood properly it will uh, not only stop the the liquid sweating out but it will also stop uh, the wood from cracking when you put a hot liquid into it so um, you might have experienced this if you've if you've tried to put boiling water into a wooden cup and it cracks immediately it's that sort of sh shock from the heat and the liquid that um, soaks straight into the wood and um, the shock of that will crack crack the wood so if you've cured the oil properly you won't have that problem um, and then the other thing you can do is just to keep using keep using the cup and eventually the holes will clog up on their own from just bits in whatever you're drinking so if you're if you're drinking tea then bits of the milk and the the tea will just get into the, the pores and just um, start to clog them up and block them that way so eventually they will uh, uh, block up over time and that should stop the sweating out cool thank you for all the questions uh, i hope the answers have been useful and helpful and uh, keep the questions coming in and i'll aim to do a q a every few episodes when i've got enough questions to answer um, 
some of the more sort of skills based ones. Maybe I'll do uh, a video dedicated just to that sort of thing. Um, clean finishes and stuff like that. The, the stuff that's easier to show rather than tell. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Um, be really great if you are not already subscribed to my channel to hit the subscribe button, uh, leave a comment, like the video. Um, I'm always up for feedback, so um, tell me anything that you've liked in the video so far or that you'd like to see in the future, and um, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. So, you know, this is a much, as much uh, coming from what you guys want to see as from what I want to show you. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll see you next time.